At Mass, when we listen to the Word of God and reflect on how we can live our lives as God invites us to, we are participating in the Liturgy of the Word. This includes readings from the Bible, the homily, the creed, and the intercession prayers. Good morning, Ben. Are you excited? Um, yeah. I mean, yes. Yes, Father Tom. I am excited. We are having a Mass to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the parish. And I asked Ben to do the first reading. So, at Mass on Sunday, we listen to four readings from the Bible, right? Yes. The first reading is from the Old Testament. The psalm is from the Book of Psalms. The second reading is from the New Testament. And the Gospel reading is from one of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Are the readings random? Each reading is especially selected to connect with the theme that the Church wants us to reflect on that week. And guess what? What? Every Catholic parish reads the same readings each Sunday. So if you have a friend on the other side of the country, you can talk about the readings because they heard the same readings you heard at Mass. That's incredible. I know, pretty cool, right? Okay, get on up there and see what the view looks like from the Ambo. So who reads which reading? Well, different people read different readings. You are a lay person. A lay person is an unordained member of the church. A lay person usually reads the first reading, the psalm, and the second reading. The priest or the deacon reads the gospel. Both the priest and deacon are ordained members of the church. Hmm. Um, Father Tom? What's up? This week in class, Sister Rosa said some parishes don't have mass every Sunday because there are not enough priests. Is that true? Yes, it is. That's so sad. What do they do? Some Sundays, these parishes have to have communion services instead of mass. What happens then? During a communion service, we still listen to the readings of the mass and the Eucharist is distributed from the tabernacle. In this case, a lay person can read the gospel. Okay, thanks. So what happens after the gospel? That's where I come in. After the gospel, the priest or deacon delivers the homily. During the homily, one of us explains the readings, shows us how they apply to our lives, and inspires us to live what we have just heard from God's word. At least we try anyway. That's awesome. Yep. Being a priest is a great life. Now come on, let's get started. You are so blessed to be Catholic. One of the many reasons you're blessed to be Catholic is the Eucharist. You get to receive the body and blood of Jesus. The Eucharist is uniquely Catholic. The liturgy of the Eucharist is so special and so important that I've asked Father Tom to tell us all about it. So let's go inside. I think everyone is waiting. The liturgy of the Eucharist is broken up into three parts. Can anyone name them? Ooh. Yeah, Isabella. The offertory? Yep, very good, Isabella. The Eucharistic prayer? Great, one more. And the reception of Holy Communion. Excellent. This is all very important, so let's go over it together, step by step. Let's start with the offertory. Throughout the Mass, God gives us moments to pause and experience its many wonders. The Offertory is one of those moments. During the Offertory, a family from the parish usually brings the bread and wine, along with the money we put in the collection for the church and the poor. Then the priest prepares the gifts to offer them to God. As the gifts are being brought forward and the priest is preparing the gifts, we offer ourselves completely to God. We can do this with a simple prayer in our hearts. Here is an example. Lord, I give myself completely to you right now. Teach me 
Lead me and feed me with the Eucharist so I can serve you powerfully here in this world and live with you forever in heaven. The offertory is also a great time to bring our problems to God and ask for his help. If there is someone you know who is suffering or something that you're struggling with, ask Jesus to heal the situation. He is the great healer. The offertory is a perfect time to ask Jesus the healer to intervene in your life. What are some examples of some things you can ask Jesus for help? I can ask Jesus to help me study hard for my test. My friend Vanny is sick. I can ask Jesus to help him get better. I can ask Jesus to help me forgive my cousin Minnie for the mean things she said to me. Jesus can help me listen to my parents. I ask Jesus for help too. I ask him to help me be a great priest. You are on a great journey with God. Your destination is heaven. God wants to be your guide and companion on this journey. He wants to be invited into every detail of your life so that he can best guide and advise you. He wants to show you the best way to live. God wants to help you become the best version of yourself, grow in virtue, and live a holy life. Next is the Eucharistic prayer. The word Eucharist means thanksgiving. During the Eucharistic prayer, we thank God for his friendship and the many ways he has blessed us. The prayer begins simply and beautifully with the priest inviting us to lift our hearts up to God. The priest says, the Lord be with you. The congregation responds with, and with your spirit. Next, the priest says, lift up your hearts. The congregation responds, we lift them up to the Lord. Finally, the priest says, let us give thanks to the Lord our God and the congregation responds, it is right and just. Next, we move to a really special part of the Mass, the consecration. Something really cool happens during the consecration, doesn't it? It sure does. The consecration is my favorite part of the whole Mass. Why is that? Because it's the moment when the bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus. Remarkable. Is that why we kneel during the consecration? Yep. Kneeling is a simple and profound sign of reverence. When we kneel during the Mass, it's a sign that something amazing is about to happen. But just before kneeling, we pray the Holy, Holy, Holy together as a parish family. Then we kneel and prepare for the great moment of consecration. Leading up to the consecration, the priest reminds us what happened at the Last Supper, the very first Eucharist. To consecrate the bread and the wine, the priest says the same words Jesus said during the Last Supper. This is my body, which is given up for you. This is the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. Do this in memory of me. This is the moment of consecration. After the priest says these words, the bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus. The consecration of the Eucharist is one of the great mysteries of our faith. The Eucharistic prayer ends with the great Amen. Sometimes we say the Amen and sometimes we sing it. Either way, we should say it loud and with confidence. This is our way of saying, yes, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that the bread and the wine just became your body and blood. What happens next, Father Tom? Well, Tiny, following the great amen, we stand and pray the Our Father together. Do you remember one of the main reasons why Jesus taught us this prayer? As a reminder. A reminder of what? 
that we're all blessed. Yes, you are blessed. It reminds me that I am the son of a great king. Good, Max. Jesus wanted us to always remember that God is our father and that we are children of God. The Our Father reminds us of the first blessing God gives us, life. This next part is one of my favorites in the whole Mass. What part is that, Tiny? Well, after the Our Father, the priest, you, ask God to fill us with his peace. I really like that. I like that too. God wants to fill you with his peace so that you can go out into the world and share it with everyone who crosses your path. Come on, everyone. It's time to leave for our little field trip. I've got so much more to tell you about the Mass. <laughs>